Hey guys, it's me, your friend, Robin O'Neill. You're listening to me reading stuff. I'm on iTunes and Podomatic, and I'm also in your little heart, taking a little nap in your heart. Do you feel me? I'm just checking in on you, and that seemed like the most direct way to do so. So, let's check in. What do you know about the night of your conception? And why do I... I always think everyone's conceived at nighttime. (laughs) Why do I... It's like I'm a child learning about sex for the first time. I don't know. It seems better that way, to be honest with you. Who did you love in... 1997, if you were even alive then. What was the most perfect day you've ever had? That's one of my favorite questions. Um, And let's be constructive about this. How can you capture a bit of that day today? Even if it's like a second of it. Because those slices of life are everything. You know that, right? They really are. Um, What other questions? I don't have any very interesting questions. Any very? That's a weird way to talk. Um, I ate a banana this morning. Yes. Now I'm going to pretend like you're asking me questions. Do I still eat my apple at 4 p.m.? Yes. Sometimes it's at 3, though. Depends on when I'm hungry. Sometimes it's late. I've been really bad to myself lately, so I just haven't been eating properly at all, to be honest with you. And the last two days, I've eaten the most disgusting foods ever, and I'm mad at myself. Uh, Anyway, have you been taking your walks? Me? No, because I, 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 I'm in too much pain to take walks. Have I been calling my elderly family members? I haven't even been doing that. So I'm just horrible. Uh, I could go on about the many things I've wondered about you and all the pretend questions I'm imagining you asking me, but let's get rolling. Uh, let's see. I am nuts right now, if you can't tell. Uh, I'm very busy. I can't even see straight. I'm so kind of stressed out, and it's making me act a little uncool. So my apologies right now. I'm just off. I'm off. My stress levels have been pretty good here in the last year since I've gotten to know all of you fine folks, but they just shot right up in the last week because I have too much to do, and I don't have a lot of help, and I don't know what to do about it. So I'm, I'm just... I'm being honest that I'm not really, I'm just not really all right right now. But the good news about me, as I try to breathe differently, is that I live for a lot of things. Like a lot of things keep me going, and they're small things. They're as varied as rereading passages in Swan's Way to knowing that I can always put on one of my Beverly Hills 90210 DVDs. I'm not lying when I say these things keep me alive. They really do. Um, have I ever said my fa- one of my favorite uh, things that this guy Chogyam Trungpa, uh, who started Shambhala, I don't know if you know anything about that, I won't get into it, but something he said is everyone loves something, even if it's only tortillas. <laughs> and that's huge, because I, it seems funny, but it's also really important to me, because I hate a lot about being alive like so much. And I know you guys don't get that side of me all that often because this podcast is about something other than that, which is, you know, really good for me. It's like an injection of goodness for me too, to do this and to remind myself of the things that I love thoroughly. But I'm telling you, if you spent a day with me, you would hear all the other stuff. And there's a lot of disappointment and anger and hatred. I'm sad about that, but there just is. But I'm saying if I, back to the tortilla thing, if I keep my attention on small good things, it doesn't necessarily solve any of the big, these like huge problems I have. (laughs) I change it from big to huge in like less than a second. Anyway, but it does keep me going. And maybe that's not so small. Maybe tortillas and Beverly Hills 90210 and rereading things I love. Maybe that's not tiny. Maybe that's huge. I don't know, but I know that I can't breathe very well right now. Um, It's a good indication that we just need to move on. We need to calm me down by reading a good poem. Today we're going to be reading Jack Spicer. I've been waiting to read something of his, and I finally landed on what I wanted to read, which happened to come from poetryfoundation.org. I keep sharing with you all that I really love going to that site, uh, and I love their app, so I recommend that. So Jack Spicer, born in 1925, I think here in Los Angeles, uh, and he died in 1965, sadly from a lifetime of alcoholism. 
But he was mainly known for his time in San Francisco, where he was involved with what is known as the San Francisco Renaissance. He spent a lot of time with a lot of big poets of the time. He also spent some time in Boston and uh, became friends with John Wieners, who, if you haven't heard about, there's a recent bookworm interview with the people that put together this John Wieners book recently, last year. It's called Supplication, Selected Poems of John Wieners. And I haven't been able to get my hands on one yet, but it's from Wave Books. And this interview with these people who made the book happen is so good. So please, I know I recommend Bookworm a lot, but get on KCRW's website and listen to that or go ahead and you know, I would I would recommend subscribing to Bookworm if you get podcasts because it's by far the best uh, literature podcast out there. So anyway, I learned a lot about John Wieners on that, and then I, it got me thinking about Jack Spicer because I knew they were friends for a while. So anyway, I just want to read this to you. It's called "Any Fool Can Get Into an Ocean." Any fool can get into an ocean but it takes a goddess to get out of one. What's true of oceans is true, of course, of labyrinths and poems. When you start swimming through riptide of rhythms and the metaphors seaweed, you need to be a good swimmer or a born goddess to get back out of them. Look at the sea otters bobbing wildly out in the middle of the poem. They look so eager and peaceful playing out there where the water hardly moves. You might get out through all the waves and rocks into the middle of the poem to touch them. But when you've tried the blessed water long enough to want to start backward, that's when the fun starts. Unless you're a poet or an otter or something supernatural, you'll drown, dear. You'll drown. Any Greek can get you into a labyrinth, but it takes a hero to get out of one. What's true of labyrinths is true, of course, of love and memory when you start remembering. I hope you could hear the smile on my face towards the end there. Any Greek, I think it was, yeah, I don't know, something about that whole, I'm just going to read it again. You'll drown, dear. You'll, You'll drown. Any Greek can get you into a labyrinth, but it takes a hero to get out of one. What's true of labyrinths is true, of course, of love and memory when you start remembering. You know, I don't often explain why certain things hit me like that, uh, and I do that on purpose, and I know that it bothers some people because I know some people crave an explanation. Like, why does that do something to me? Why, why is that something that I know I could translate into image? And why do I think it's important to read on here? But I like to just kind of drop these things in and at you all so that you can make your own decisions about them. And I trust you guys enough to know that you're, you know, and I also know that not everyone's going to feel those things. And I also have a weird feeling that my voice and the way that I do whatever the hell it is I'm doing on here kind of tells you enough, but I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong, and that's something that I know I keep thinking about changing. Do I need to explain more or not? I don't know. I guess that's a question. You guys can get back with me on that, but I guarantee it'll be some people will think I should explain more, and other people will think I'm doing just fine as is, so I guess I guess I just need to figure it out for myself. You guys have enough to do. I don't need to employ you all. Uh, You guys... I'm tired. I'm stressed out. My heart is going a mile a minute. I am fueled on coffee and almost no food. I'm going to let you go before things get weird. See? Oh, that's the thing, too, about that's it. Like, when I'm done, I'm done. This is the end. We're done here, you guys. I loved our time together. This is how it is to hang out with me. I'll be hanging out with my friend, and we'll be having fun and talking, and then I'll just out of nowhere, I'll say, okay, you got to go, man. I need to be alone now. But I love you. And so now I'm talking to you guys, too. I love you for real. You guys make me so happy. Your responses to this podcast make me so happy. And that is no minor thing to me. So take care of yourselves. Drink water. Thank you for putting up with me. Thank you. Thank you. I really do mean that. I'm not easy. I'm not easy all the time. But uh, be nice to yourselves, and I'll see you guys on Thursday. Goodbye. Goodbye.